What's up YouTube? This is All Things Quick. So I'm back with another video. We're finally, after all this time, starting to reassemble the M54 B25. So that's the 3 Series BMW engine, the 2.5 liter. So I got my pistons here. This is from the removal. I'll put a link to the video of actually tearing this engine down. This is the medium build that I'm doing. We'll be doing this one right now for about 450 to 500 horsepower range. That's well we're working on the B30 which is the 3 liter and hopefully getting that one to somewhere around like 900 to 1000 horsepower or 1000 brake horsepower rather slap it in the car once that's done but for now we're working on this one and I just got my pistons here I got this I was gonna remove the rings and order some rings for tomorrow and I was gonna film this one video over the course of like maybe a week or so focusing on this type of stuff but first before we get into all that I just want to give a shout out to dev e46 for boosting our discord server and making our server great go and check this guy's socials out his instagram and his tiktok are down in the description go and show this guy some support for his boosted e46 that he has and if you want to find out how to get your name shouted out in one of my youtube videos then hit us up on our discord server that link is also in the description but anyways the most bizarre thing i've ever seen so the three liter has pistons and the connecting rods they're completely flat on the b30 actually i'll grab one here so this is the bottom of the connecting rods for the b30 so you can see how it's completely flat it's a machined surface right but the b25 i'm not sure why but like this is the way that these are and and all of them are like that i've actually seen other engines that are like that it's a very specific one that goes with the other half of the connecting rod you can see here that's a perfect fit right if you try a different one because it's jagged it it, it will never it will never fit properly see that gap it's just not right it's not sitting properly so like i don't know i I messed up and I took them all apart and didn't consider that but anyways I'm gonna match them all up and then get them with the right ones and I'm gonna remove the rings off of this thing and we're gonna clean this up and then order some new ones for tomorrow hopefully and get back with doing the rest of this video after all the cleanup so the main idea with this is that we're doing this build with the same pistons because they're not in terrible condition obviously because it was a engine that was completely NA no boost no nothing so I'm gonna clean this stuff up reuse these pistons because I'm not going to need much more than what these are offering with the high compression. However, the reason I'm removing the rings and not just slapping them back in the engine is because we're going to gap the rings to a specific size and file them down so that we can have the proper gap or the proper amount of boost that we'll be running for the setup. So I have a chart. I'll list the chart right here. It gives you a rough idea of what you should be doing for the amount of horsepower or the amount of boost pressure that you're running and gives you an outline and a general idea of how to file the down or what dimension to file them down to so I'm gonna remove all this stuff real quick all right so all the piston rings are out and the oil rings as well so I'm gonna throw those out in the garbage and we're gonna match up these bottom of the bearings here some of them have the bearing sleeves but I'm gonna order some new ones with those as well because I don't want to reuse the same stuff because you can see here this has some pretty significant wear on it and definitely don't want to use those again so I don't want any slack in that so I'm gonna order some new ones and then go with that so all of this stuff is garbage so I'm actually gonna take these out because obviously I'm not gonna use them so those are garbage as well but the gap with the piston rings is a very important piece to boosting an engine and wanting reliability when you have things that are made out of cast so the problem becomes that when you increase your boost level you obviously increase your temperatures so as things get hotter things start to thermally expand and what happens is that because these are made out of cast aluminum the compression ring actually overheats and becomes so tight that it actually butts up together and then it over expands to the point that it can't contain itself in here anymore and these are the ring lands in here so the ring land will actually break the top portion of the piston and then you'll lose all compression in that cylinder and that's what's happened with one of my engines and I'll show you a good example of what that actually looks like so basically the outside of that ring land had completely destroyed itself and just obliterated this so there was zero compression in cylinder one so that's why this graph or this table that tells you about the boost levels and all that stuff is very important because basically like you can only go to a certain boost level which is like seven or eight psi and that's boring so 
I don't want to be limited to that. Since the engine's already apart, I had this intention when I was taking it apart was to file these down and actually make a reliable boosted B25 engine with cast components. So now that I got these out, these are garbage and I'm just going to match these up and see where they are. Actually, I forgot that these ones out. These are very simple to take out if you don't know how. I guess I don't have another example, but there's just a little tab right here and you just pop them out with something pointy. You have to match these up, see where exactly they fit. It's a tedious task on its own, but I'm gonna get this done. See, like that's a significant groove in there like that's why i never really understood these like, if you look like let's say you put that on a different one like look at that gap right here, here just for, for an example like this one this one fits perfectly you can see it's like it's it's sealed up nice right then let's put this same one on a different one look at that gap right so they're like however that is like it looks like they're broken off but that's how they're machined or something so i don't know okay so i have all six pistons with their connecting rods and basically all i need to do is clean these things and order new rings and bearings and then i'll have this reassembled gotta find the bolts for these things i'm actually thinking about ordering some arp just to have more clamping force and stronger metal in there because i don't want any of that backing out and for now anyways these rods look good I was thinking about going with aftermarket forged rods but because of the horsepower range that I'm going for I'm not actually gonna do that this should be sufficient and if it breaks it breaks I haven't seen an example of one that has at that horsepower range so that being said I'm just gonna clean these up and then you know what as a matter of fact I changed my mind I'm not gonna clean these myself I'm actually gonna take all of these to car quest and I'm gonna drop them off and have them clean them in their container pay a few bucks to get it done so I might take a couple more parts and then get them to wash up some of that stuff too there's an oil pump up there that I want cleaned up as well too because I'm actually going to use I was thinking I'm gonna use this one here for the b30 and do a tie down nut on it but the one for the b25 I'm actually just gonna go and weld the nut straight to it so it doesn't back out obviously it has to be cleaned up to do that so I think I'm gonna drop that off as well so I just decided right now since I'm going to clean those parts at car quest I I said to myself, what the heck, I might as well take this engine block out, strip it down completely, get them to clean that up as well. I don't even know where the head went, to be honest with you. I'll find the head and I'll, I'm gonna get them to clean the head too. I want a clean slate to go into this with, so I'm going to disassemble that engine there completely. It's just the uh, oil filter housing, the alternator, and some engine mounts. Get those off, strip down, and then get that block in the back of my truck and get those shipped out on Monday probably to get that all cleaned up. All right, and here it is, the wonderful M54 B25. I need to get off a couple sensors. There's those two knock sensors right there and a crankshaft position sensor. There's also the oil filter housing, the alternator, power steering lines on that oil filter housing as well. The sensors associated with those. I'm gonna get all that cleaned up. I'm gonna get all that off of there and I'm going to get those engine mounts off as well. And then that thing will be stripped down, take it off the engine stand and then it will be done. something fun I completely and entirely messed that up so I didn't feel that slip out and it slipped right out of where the hole was so yeah I went straight down into the block and didn't drill out that bolt that I just broke so that sucks anyways I'm gonna have to fill that like TIG weld that fill it up grind it down and then actually drill through it properly that sucks I just completely didn't notice that it had slipped out but anyways whatever that's 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 small stuff that doesn't really matter yeah I'm gonna get the rest of this stuff off that's Ah, uh, that sucks, but whatever.
so there it is. It's all done. I decided actually I'm just gonna ask the machine shop like if they can fix that one part that I stripped out there in the block. And I was trying to do that bolt. But other than that, I got my pistons ready. I got this block ready and I'm just going to throw the pistons in the back of the truck and then that's good to go for the machine shop so then it can get cleaned up. Okay, so check this out. I have my oil pump here and that's the housing for it. And then I have the pump itself. So this section here is aluminum and then this section here is a steel and then this section as well, which is the actual like compressor of it. So this part being steel and this part being steel. Instead of having the oil tie down nut, I'm gonna put this on here once it's cranked down and clean and stuff like that. And then I'm actually gonna, I might put a nut on there, but I'm gonna weld this to that, crank these down to spec and then use Loctite with them. So then it will never back out. I'm gonna use that solution for this. For the B30, I'm going to use the oil tie down nut for that because that's gonna be like really high horsepower and I wanna be able to service it if I have to. This one was already like kind of iffy to me, so so I'm just gonna send it with some welds and, and then I know that will hold. So when it dies, it dies, but I think that should be a good thing. Anyways, I'm actually gonna end the video right here. I just feel like if I keep recording, I'm going to have too much content for the next video. So with that being said, this is the end of that video. If you liked that video, definitely hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Let me know that you did enjoy this content. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think about all this. And don't forget to hit us up on our Discord server. The link is in the description. We'll see you in the next one. See you later.